Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be going over Unit 7, Topic 5 of AP Psychology, an introduction to personality. As always, if you're finding value in these review videos, consider subscribing and supporting the channel. Your personality is unique to you. Your personality consists of how you think, act, feel, and process information. How your personality develops, changes, and is shaped has been looked at by a variety of different psychologists from different perspectives. When looking at the different approaches, we can see that the psychodynamic approach leans more towards the nature side of the nurture versus nature debate, while behaviorism is more on the nurture side. Psychodynamic theories believe that an individual's personality and behavior are shaped by their conscious and unconscious mind. Different life events from our past shape us in different ways. These theories date back to the work of Sigmund Freud and his psychoanalytic theory, which focused on the unconscious motivations and their influence on personality. Freud believed that for the most part, the mind was hidden. Freud used free association to gain insight into an individual's unconscious. Remember from our Unit 1 videos, free association is when an individual is told a word or shown an image and told to say whatever comes to mind. For example, if I say Star Wars, what's the first thing you think of? Let me know in the comment section down below. Today, people often use an iceberg to describe Freud's ideas. On the top, above the water, is our conscious awareness. Just under the water is our pre-conscious. This is where information is stored for only a limited amount of time. This information can be recalled and brought back above the water to our conscious awareness when needed. Below the pre-conscious area is our unconscious mind. This is where repressed memories are located. Now, when it comes to personality, Freud looked at three different concepts and their interactions with one another. If we go back to our iceberg example, we can see that we have the ego located in our conscious mind. The ego controls our impulses, deals with external stimuli, and is the overseer of the superego and it. The superego is located located in our pre-conscious, and it represents our ideals and judgments. This is an individual's moral component of their personality. While the it is located in our unconscious mind, and it strives to satisfy our basic drives, the focus is solely on pleasure, such as hunger and sex. The id deals with immediate satisfaction. We can see that the superego and the id have competing wants and demands. Freud believed that when we are born, we are born with libido, which is psychic energy that is sexual and aggressive impulses that we must learn to control. You can see this illustrated in how Freud viewed personality the id is the instant gratification, and the superego is the moral compassion. The ego has to decide then what's best for us. It listens to the superego and the id and determines the best outcome. So we can see that Freud believed that our personality and behaviors are constantly being influenced by our conscious mind, but mainly our unconscious mind. We'll go more into Freud and his ideas on personality and his psychosexual stages in our next video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future topic review videos. Now Freud was a controversial individual, and not all of his ideas and theories turned out to be correct. Some individuals such as Alfred Adler and Carl Jung agreed for the most part with Freud. They accepted Freud's basic ideas of personality, the importance of the unconscious mind, but also put more of a focus on the conscious mind and less focus on sex and aggression as the main drivers. They are often called neo-Freudians. Alfred Adler believed that it was not a child's sexual tension that significantly shaped a child's personality, but rather their social tension. Adler believed that individuals strive to conquer their inferiority complex. Essentially, Adler believed that our main drive was to feel a sense of belonging and feel significant. Carl Jung focuses more on social factors as well. Jung agreed with Freud about the power of the unconscious mind, but believed that our unconscious mind was more than just our thoughts and feelings. Jung believed that we have a collective unconscious, which is shared inherited memories from past generations. Essentially, the collective unconscious is a made up of different human experiences from the past. If we move away from the psychodynamic theories and look at the behaviorist perspective, we can see the impact impact of Albert Bandura on our understanding of personality. Bandura believed that our environment impacted and shaped our personality. Bandura believed in reciprocal determinism, which looks at an individual's environment, behavior, their thoughts and feelings, and how they influence and impact each other. Notice that in the diagram, each of the different factors impact one another. Personal factors influence behaviors, and behaviors influence personal factors. If we change gears again, we can look at humanistic theories, which are theories that view personality with a focus on personal growth of an individual. We can see the work of Abraham Maslow and how his idea of a person's hierarchy of needs influences their personality. We last talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs in our Unit 7 Topic 1 video. Remember, Maslow believed that an individual had to satisfy their physiological, safety, love and belonging, self-esteem needs first. Once they've done that, they've moved into self-actualization, which is when they start to achieve their potential. An individual will also be able to focus on self-transcendence, which is when an individual seeks to find their purpose, meaning, or identity in life. Maslow believed that if an individual was able to have all their needs fulfilled and reach self-actualization, they would be more confident and would worry less about what other 
others thought. Another humanist, Carl Rogers, shared similar views as Maslow. Rogers had a person-centered perspective. He believed that individuals could not achieve self-actualization if the environment in which they live hinders them. Environments that promote personal growth will allow individuals to be more accepting, genuine, and have stronger empathy for others. This caring mentality would help individuals be able to develop stronger self-awareness and self-acceptance. When looking at personality, we also need to talk about the work of Robert McRae and Paul Costa, who looked at five personality factors, which became known as the Big Five. McRae and Costa developed a test that focuses on five different personality traits. This test is used to better understand individuals' personality. The first trait is conscientiousness. If an individual scores high here, they would be more organized and careful. If they score low in this trait, they'd be more impulsive and disorganized. The second was agreeableness. Individuals who have a high degree of agreeableness will be more trusting of others, while individuals who lack agreeableness will be more suspicious of others and less trusting. The third is neuroticism, which focuses on emotional stability. Individuals who score high in this category will be more insecure and anxious, and individuals that have a low score will often be more calm and feel secure with themselves. The fourth is openness. If an individual scores high here, they'll be more open to new ideas and will be more imaginative. If an individual scores low here, they'll often find comfort in routines and be more practical. Lastly, there's extroversion. If an individual scores high here, they're more often to be affectionate and sociable. But if an individual scores low here, they're often more reserved. Now, in trying to better understand which of the big five traits are more prevalent in an individual, or if a researcher is just trying to look at personality in general, they'll utilize case studies, surveys, personality inventories, observations, experiments, and much more. All of these different methods allow researchers to better understand personality from different perspectives and situations. Now, we've already covered case studies, observations, surveys, and experiments in our Unit 1, Topic 2 video and 3 video, so I won't go over them again, but I do want to explain personality inventory. These are questionnaires that are created to help gauge a person's personality traits. These tests are often set up in a way that will require participants to respond to different questions, statements, or situations with true or false answers or agree or disagree statements. By doing so, it helps researchers determine different personality traits of an individual. These can be used to help identify the big five personality traits identified by McRae and Costa. And just like that, another topic review video is done. Now make sure you hit that subscribe button because over the next couple topic review videos, we are going to be expanding our conversation of personality as we look more into the different theories and also people that we talked about in this video. As always, if you need more help with AP Psychology, make sure to check out my ultimate review packet. It's a great resource and it'll help you get an A in your class and a five on the national exam. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin and I'll see you next time online.